there's somebody in my room. That's uh, SQL Server running on ARM. What's the story, huh? Well, the thing is, Microsoft doesn't seem to make this a priority right now. After all, they do have Azure SQL Database, which they want people to use. And people that are going to be running SQL Server locally are most likely going to be also running Windows Server locally. And that's the whole other story because Windows Server also doesn't run on ARM. Anyway, they've done a really good job with Visual Studio 2022 preview, which runs on ARM and it runs beautifully. You can check out my videos, uh, I'll link to them right below the like button there. However, SQL Server, not yet, but there are other ways and I will show you one of them today. And no, I will not put an Intel box in the closet and run SQL Server off of that. Although you could do something like that. No, today I'm gonna show you how to install a different form of SQL Server. Let's not beat around the bush. It's not gonna be SQL Server. So if that's what you wanted to see, you're gonna get close. You're gonna be able to run the database engine, but it's not gonna have all the features of SQL Server. I'm gonna just tell you what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna use a Docker image to run a container with Azure SQL Edge, which is gonna give you a lot of that SQL Server functionality if you just want a database engine. And we're gonna run Azure Data Studio locally on this box, the Volterra, which is Windows Dev Kit 2023. It is a Windows machine and it's for developers. It runs an ARM chip. I've also done a bunch of videos on this one too. This is just gonna get you developing locally. We're also gonna upload the AdventureWorks sample database so that you can get that data in there for instant gratification if you're designing dashboards or something, I don't know. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it'll work, but it won't be the fastest thing in the world. And unfortunately, if you wanna develop on an ARM machine today in, uh, what is it, 2022? What, what year is it? Cause you might be watching this two years from now, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully by that time, Microsoft has released some kind of preview of SQL Server for ARM. Hopefully. But if not, then perhaps uh, this will get you going. If you really, really need to develop locally on SQL Server and do your stuff locally. Also, just in case you want to be adventurous and you want to go try it yourself and install SQL Server, believe me, I've tried it. I've tried it with several versions. I've tried it using uh, WinGet. I've also tried it using the UI with the uh, executable downloader that you get from the website. It doesn't work. It looks like it might work, but then it doesn't work. Oh my God, look at all the tabs I have open. Which tab is what? Well, I'll just open new tabs, okay? <laughs> so you wanna go to Docker Hub. Docker Hub is where you have uh, images and you wanna search for Azure SQL Edge. You're gonna get a bunch of these. I don't know why these three are the top, but this is the one we want. Azure SQL Edge by Microsoft. So grab that one. To grab it, make sure you have Docker running. Now, how do you check if you have Docker running? Well, if you run this command right here, Docker pull Microsoft, blah, blah, blah copy that and then try to execute that. It's basically gonna give you an error saying that the daemon is not running. But if it successfully installs the image, then we're good to go. So you can also say Docker image list, and this will give you what images are currently installed, including the one we just put there, and there it is. The next thing you wanna do is start up the image so you have a running container. This is the command to do that. Docker run, accept the EULA, add a password. I'm using password one, two, three. Then uh, the MSSQL user is SA, which is pretty typical. I'm mapping port 1433 to 1433 because that's the port that SQL Server listens on. We're gonna give it the name SQL for the name of the container and the image we wanna use. Okay, and we're good to go. I'll actually, um, I'll leave this command in the comments so you can copy it. Once that command finishes successfully, if you issue the command docker ps, you will see the container running. There it is, cool. This is the container ID right here. Uh, we're gonna need that, so make sure you uh, know how to get it. So we have SQL Server running already. Not SQL Server, SQL, Azure SQL Edge, but you know what I mean. How the heck do we query it and look at what databases are inside? Well, there's a couple ways. One way is to open up Visual Studio Code, which you should already have, and you can install the SQL Server extensions. So just go to extensions, search for SQL. Probably the first one will be this one, SQL Server, MSSQL, make sure it's by Microsoft. It's this one, okay? Click on install. So now I have it installed. It's this tab right here. If you go to it, you can add a connection. Host name, hmm. 
This one is um, this one is tricky. It's not localhost like you might think. If Docker was running on Windows, that might be localhost, but it's running inside of WSL, so you have to get the IP address of your WSL instance. Go to your Ubuntu instance and say IPADDR, and then ETH0, that's your network card, your virtual network card. Here's the IP address. So let's just ping it to make sure everything works, and yeah. Locally, of course, it pings. Oh, whoa, whoa, stop. Now, let's uh, let's open up PowerShell and make sure it pings from the Windows machine. Yeah, we're getting those pings back. Cool. So let's go back to uh, VS Code. And now that we have that SQL Server extension, we can say add connection. And here I'm gonna paste in the IP address for the host. Enter, um, database to connect, uh, that's fine. Let's just use the default. SQL login, we're gonna use SQL login not Windows login. And now the username is that one we passed in when we started the container. So this would be SA and the password was password one, two, three, save password. Sure. Display name. Nah. And guess what folks? Now we've connected to our database engine and we have a client. This client is Visual Studio Code. And this extension is good. If you want to query the database, I already have AdventureWorks and something called MyDB in there. I was playing around, but, um, uh, it doesn't have as many features as SQL Server Management Studio, for example, a tool that would manage SQL Server. That's why it's called SQL Server Management Studio. Anyway, SQL Server Management Studio, unfortunately doesn't work. Not unless you have an X64 Windows machine laying around and you can install SQL Server Management Studio on that and then query this one, but then what's the point? There is another tool that you can use though, and it's called Azure Data Studio. All right, you can just go and install that. You know, by the way, you can also get it using Winget. So if you're on PowerShell here at the command line, Winget, and then uh, let's just do a search. Let's search for SQL. Let's see what's available right there. You can just say, copy that package name right there and say, Winget install, and then paste that in. It should install it just fine. I've already installed mine. Let's open it up, Azure Data Studio. Now, this application runs fully using the translation layer, the built-in translation layer that translates this x64 application to arm so it's gonna be uh, not as spiffy as you want if we take a look at task manager you'll see it running under details here architecture and there it is sql data azure studio it's an x64 based process but it runs so how fast do you really need it to be come on you should be lucky, lucky enough, enough that, that this works, works. <laughs> so let's click on new connection here. Microsoft SQL Server. Server is going to be that IP address. Whoa, not this. Where's my IP address? This. All right, let's get that IP address in there. Authentication type, not Windows, not Azure, SQL login. Username is going to be SA. Password is password123. Remember the password and click connect. And there we are. We're connected. How cool is that? Now, I did say I have AdventureWorks in there already and MyDB. I'm just gonna manage that. Can I delete it? I guess I could just drop the database, but I'm gonna just show you how to get AdventureWorks in here again. So I'll have two AdventureWorks, but you can have one. You can have whatever you want. You can have three, four, five. It's it's all you. You do you. Search for AdventureWorks database. It's a sample database that has a lot of cool features. If you just wanna start application programming against some sort of data out there without having to create all the data. We're gonna grab this OLTP version. This file right here is for uh, SQL Server 2019. You can probably get away with getting any of these, but I'm just going to grab this 2019 back file. .bak is a backup file for uh, SQL Server databases. So just click on that and download it. Now this will get you a file, but that file exists in Windows. The trick here is you got to get that file over to your Linux environment and over to the container. How do you do that? Now I have two of them because I already did this before. I'm just going to use my old one. So first, uh, when you open up Explorer in Windows and you have WSL installed, it should should already have this Linux right here, this Linux extension, and then Ubuntu, and then basically your entire Linux directory structure mapped in Explorer, and that's how I do it. So just open up uh, your directory. Mine is called Alex. Yours will be called whatever your name is, unless your name is Alex, then yours will also be called Alex. So make sure that directory is visible here and go back to uh, where I had downloads. There's that file. So I want to go ahead and drag that over to my directory. So just drag that in, drop it in there, and it'll copy it over to Linux for you. So to check that it's there, just go over to your Linux machine, your WSL instance, and list the directory contents there. And you'll see that it's right there. AdventureWorks2019.back. Cool. Now, 
it's in there, but it's not in your container yet. You got to get it over to your running Docker container that has SQL Server running. How do you do that? Well, there's a copy command. So you can copy a physical file on your file system over to the container directory. Remember this container running ID that I told you about? Here, let's, let's do that again. Docker PS, and this is the container ID that's running. So make sure you get that, all right? Now the copy command will basically say Docker CP, the file that you want to copy, Adventure works 2019.back then the container id which is the same as that and then some location i'm going to put it into the data directory of mysql which happens to be in slash var opt mssql data so when you run that it copies over the file how does that help us well that makes it available for this connection to actually get that file and connect to it and restore from it so i'm going to select my server right click on it go to manage and then up here we have a restore button so i'm going to click on restore restore from database or backup file i'm going to restore from the backup file this is the backup file path this is not the path even though it may look like a linux file system it's not this is the file system of the container let's find var opt mssql data and then AdventureWorks, there it is. Let's press OK here. It's going to automatically fill in the database name and the target database. This is the destination, by the way. I already have one of these, remember? So I'm gonna call this um, AW19 for AdventureWorks 2019, but the short version. And here you get to select what you wanna restore. There's only one option, so click on restore. And that is very quick operation, just takes a couple of seconds. Now when you expand databases, you'll see AW19 there, tables. Here are all your tables. Let's look at person person, select top 1000, and we have our data that you can query. Now going back to uh, VS Code, if you do a refresh here, you'll see the same data available here as well. VS Code will allow you to do a few things including selecting some of the data and doing some operations. There it is. You can also use Visual Studio. I'm running the ARM preview here. So if you're just in Visual Studio, you can go up to Tools, Connect to Database, and then uh, the server name will be that IP address again. Yes, the one that I keep forgetting, this one. Put that in there. SQL Server Authentication, SA, Password, 123. It's populating the databases, so you know it's gonna connect. Let's do AW19 and press OK here. And there's all your data right Right there show table data so even though you might not be able to get sql server you can get something pretty close if you're working on an arm machine and by the way the process for doing this on a m1 or an apple silicon mac is actually very similar you can pretty much reproduce these steps on a mac but if you do want to see that video let me know in the comments down below thanks for watching folks and i'll be back